Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today we are taking a look at Zorn OS version 12. Now, over the past few years, I have reviewed uh, the various versions of Zorn as they've come out, and for the most part, really been happy with this distribution. Now, this most recent release is probably the biggest set of changes we have ever seen in Zorn. And... Uh, you know, a lot of changes that could mean good, could mean bad. So continue watching if you want to see how well this distro stacks up. So let's start out by taking a look at the Zorn OS homepage. And that's what I've got open right here in Chromium. And one of the things that I like about this distro, they have a well-organized web page. It looks good. You can find all the links that you want. Uh, you can see right across the top here, home, tour of the features, gallery, download, help, blog, con you know, all the stuff that you might want to find, it's right there at the top. Uh, you know, easy for searching, that sort of thing. And if you scroll on down, talk a little bit about some of the various features that they've got going on and when you go to their blog here is the most recent blog post which is about the OS 12 beta release and uh, you know like I said this is a beta release they are I guess still bug fixing and that sort of thing but I've got to say I uh, really haven't had any issues myself things seem to be running well so uh, uh, hopefully the final release will be uh, will be out soon but anyway um, I'm not going to go through all this myself. Uh, I will leave a link for those of you that want to go through and read it. But probably the biggest change uh, from those of you that have taken a look at and played with earlier versions of Zorn is their new desktop. And what is new? Well, it is now based on GNOME Shell. Now, I will be quite honest in that I am a very big fan of GNOME Shell, always liked it. I like the activities overview. Um, there's a lot of neat functionality that's built into the GNOME Shell. If you're a person that does not like GNOME Shell, then you know maybe this is not the distro for you. Um, but I think that, at least in you know my opinion, I think GNOME Shell is very intuitive. Once you, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot to learn on, you know, figuring out how to how to use it. Um, and there's a lot of functionality built into it. So let's take a walkthrough of the desktop. It's really pretty simple. Um, of course, we've got a real nice wallpaper here. And uh, you can go to change background if you want to go and change around your backgrounds. Uh, not a huge number of backgrounds available, but uh, a fair number. Really nice looking, though. Um, I really like some of the backgrounds that they have available. So anyway, there's your background. And then coming down to the panel across the bottom, if you click on the Z for Zorin, you'll see you've got a pop-up menu, and it is searchable. So you can come down here, and let's say we're looking for LibreOffice Writer, just start putting in Writer, and boom, there it is. Um, but it is also categorized and then over on the uh, over on the right hand side it's nice that you have access to uh, to your various file folders so you know your home folder documents downloads that sort of thing and then a couple of quick links to your software centers uh, settings activity overview speaking of the activities overview of course those of you that are familiar with gnome shell are familiar with the activities overview but you can simply hit the uh, Windows slash super key, whatever you want to call it. Hit that. You go into the overview. And let's say, once again, we're looking for a LibreOffice writer. And boom, there it is. And let me drag over a few things from my other monitor so you can kind of get an idea. And this is, you know, those of you that have used. Uh, Gnome Shell before know all about this, but uh, for those of you new to it, if you go and hit the activities overview, you'll see that it kind of minimizes these various windows. So if you have various applications that are open and running, they will minimize like this, or they're not really minimized, but uh, shrunken down, I guess you could say. And then if you want to switch between them, you can go and do that. And over here, 
these are your various workspaces. So if, uh, let's say, you had a couple things running, you wanted to move them over to a different workspace, you can just uh, take it, drag it, drop it onto that particular workspace, and boom, it's moved there. Uh, you can also go and switch between workspaces. So you can come over here, click on the workspace you want to go to, and boom, there you are in that workspace now. We'll go back to where we were. Go and get these out of the way again. So anyway, that's kind of a, a quick look at the overview. Uh, then we've got a few programs that are pinned to the panel. Uh, they've got uh, Chromium. Chrome, oh, I can't talk today. Wow. Uh, Chromium web browser, uh, Geary email, and then our Nautilus files. Right next to that is the programs that I have running. And then kind of scrolling on over, we've got our tray icons, uh, which this little icon right here is for my screen recorder. Then next to that, we've got, um, uh, if you go and click on that, you'll be able to go and play around with your mic volume and, and your regular volume, uh, your connections. Um, uh, if you've got a uh, VPN set up, for example, you could go and, and, uh, and switch between your VPN settings, that sort of thing from here. And then next to that, we have our GNOME calendar, uh, as well as um, you'll have notifications that pop up into this box right here. One of the unique features that Zorn OS has had for you know quite some time has been an appearance changer. One of one of their goals has always been to try to create a more familiar environment for people that are making the jump from Windows over to Linux. So you know, kind of looking at what we've got going on here, it um, you know, especially with the menu. Uh, when you pop up that menu, kind of gives you a very uh, I wouldn't say extremely Windows look, but it's going to be a familiar layout to a Windows user. I, I think it'll be, uh, you know, fairly intuitive on what you need to do as far as finding things around the menu and that sort of thing. Um, but they do have an appearance changer, and let me go and open that up. We'll hit the overview and the Zorn appearance changer. And it kind of goes beyond just switching between, uh, you know, various windows looks and that sort of thing. You can see we've got the default look set up right now. And then going to this next one, um, you know, it still gives you the same type of menu. Um, rather than icons, we now have a full description. So, you know, you sort of see that sort that kind of thing in uh, in a traditional gnome gnome style panel. Um, maybe I don't know, maybe Windows 98, that sort of thing. And then this final uh, appearance change, you can switch to this, which gives you a traditional. Well, I don't know if you want to call it traditional or not, but gives you a gnome shell type look. So you will have. Let me go and hit the overview, you cl click the overview, you now have, um, you know, your uh, your GNOME launcher right here, so you can launch launch applications from there, and, uh, you know, that may be more to the liking for some of those of you that, uh, uh, that are big GNOME shell fans and want to keep it to a, you know, a stock GNOME shell look. Uh, myself, I really, even though I really like GNOME shell, I don't really use that launcher so um, really any of these would be fine with me personally I might uh, you know I probably would keep it on this first one just because I like the more compact icon view um, and you don't necessarily have to keep it on the bottom I'll, I'll show you that in just a second but kind of scrolling on down you can see that uh, if you want icons on the desktop you can turn that on turn it off um, Title bar buttons, you want left, right, uh, play around with the scaling, animations, that sort of thing. Then you can move on to theming. So if you want to change up the color some, you can do that. Uh, 
um, or go really custom down here. Um, personally, I'm just going to keep it on the default. That was just fine with me. Uh, you can go and tweak your fonts from here. And then when you get over here to the panel, you can move the panel from the top to the bottom. Whatever uh, whatever works for you. Do you want an intelligent auto hide? So you can get it out of the way if you want. Uh, tweak the uh, panel height, the opacity. Do you want to have the menu or not? So very nice. Now Zorin OS 12 is based on Ubuntu 16.04. So you know all the software that you get uh, in the uh, in the Ubuntu repositories, it's all there. Um, you also get uh, the GNOME Software Center, which is what Ubuntu is now using for its software center. So let me go and pull that up. So you get the very nice GNOME Software Center. Very big improvement over the old Ubuntu Software Center. Um, I at least me personally, I found uh, the Ubuntu Software Center was glitchy, froze up on you, lagged, uh, didn't always work the way that it should. Really don't have that with the GNOME Software Center. It uh, it seems like very smooth. You can also do updates through it. Uh, you can see a list of everything that you have installed. Um, very nice, uh, very nice application. Um, and kind of, you know, while we're on the subject of software, Zorn does have, um, and this is kind of a a help for new users kind of thing. Um, Maybe it's under browser. For new users, they've got this uh, web browser manager. So by default, you have Chromium installed. This uh, web browser manager, you've also got uh, you've got a choice of Firefox, Web, uh, which is previously known as Epiphany, and Midori. You can go and install any of those from here. All you got to do is go and click. Well, let's let's put in uh, Firefox. Just click install. Put in your password, and it'll install for you. And all of these are pretty good browsers. Um, uh, Midori it it hasn't been updated recently, so you know it's a nice lightweight browser. Like I said, it hasn't been updated recently, but it's still it's still a pretty good browser. Um, now, you know, for the, for the more experienced users out there, you're saying, you know, what's the difference between this and, and installing one of these browsers through the software center? Well, really nothing. Um, but it is one of those little things for the new users out there. You know, you may not know the names of all the browsers out there and, and that sort of thing. This kind of, it puts them all together. It's right there for you, that sort of thing. Performance wise, things have been running great for me. Um, really haven't run into issues, you know, glitches, freeze, things freezing up, crashing, all that kind of thing. So, very happy with that. Um, since this is based on Ubuntu 16.04, you ru are running kernel 4.4. Obviously, since you can go and upgrade the kernel on Ubuntu 16.04, you could do the same thing. It's the same thing here. Essentially, anything that you could do to Ubuntu 16.04 you could do here uh, you know at least within reason so you know software that you could add there you can add it here that sort of thing um, one thing that's carried over from Ubuntu 16.04 that is a little bit of a downer at least for me and for some of the other AMD graphics card users uh, the proprietary um, FGLRX uh, driver it's no longer available in 1604 you have to use the open source driver at least if you are running uh, one of the older AMD graphics cards like I am which is somewhat of a bummer um, you know because at least for me the Radeon driver the performance really isn't all that great so I get a fair amount of screen tearing on videos and that sort of thing um, there's a little bit of tweaking and whatnot that you can do to the uh, to the AMD driver um, or the Radeon driver, so you can fix some of that. Um, 
but the performance for for my graphics card really isn't all that great um, at least under the AM the uh, under the Radeon driver now you know as many of you know I'm using Solus as my main distro right now um, under Solus they have tweaked the Radeon driver to kind of optimize performance it runs much better although I'm hoping within the next year or so to uh, to upgrade to a newer to a newer uh, graphics card so that is no longer an issue for me with the change to the gnome shell base one thing that you no longer have is all of the great animations that uh, older versions of uh, of Zorn had um, and that was because they use compiz there's all kinds of neat compiz uh, uh, animations uh, so now that you're on Gnome Shell, you don't really you don't get the com the comp is, and you know for me it was one of those things where I thought the the looks were neat, but it's not really that big of a deal breaker for me. For some people, they you know it, it might be a big deal. One of the things that I did really like a, a look that I really liked it was what was called Dodge. And what it is is when you're switching between applications that are or windows that are sitting on top of each other, when I would go and click from one to the other, it looked like you were shuffling them, almost like you were shuffling a deck of cards. I thought it was really neat looking. Um, you don't have that anymore. I mean, you can see here as I'm switching back and forth, you got a nice smooth transition, but it's not that shuffling effect. Um, like I said, it's not really that big of a deal for me. Um, but there's a lot of people out there that really loved uh, going and tweaking the compiz, uh, the compiz animations, and and you know really going all out with it. So you don't have that. Um, once again, not a deal breaker for me, but uh, might be a big deal for some of you out there if that if that was something that was a big attraction for you. Um, and I think having said that. That kind of finishes my review up. I mean, really, all all together, I really like this this distribution. It's got a lot going for it. You know, I you know maybe I am a little bit biased because I really like Gnome Shell. If you're not a fan of Gnome Shell, then maybe this isn't going to go over well for you. Um, but for me personally, I really like what they're doing here, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, the final product. See if there's anything else that they add or change or, or any of that kind of stuff. So, having said all that, if you got any comments, questions, any of that kind of stuff, leave it down below. I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And I hope to see everyone on my next video. Thanks a lot.